morning is from Appalachia. And um, when I was working with, with the other people on this, they suggested I find music from Appalachia. And I want to thank them because I've never heard of Appalachia Rising before. And I loved all of their music. It's, it's, it's lovely. This is, as I said, a traditional story from Appalachia featuring that Appalachian folk, her folk person, folk hero, Jack. The winter wind blew and blew at the top of the mountain where Jack and his mother lived in a drafty little cabin. It blew so hard they couldn't stay warm no matter how much wood they put on the fire. One day, Jack decided that he had had enough of the wind and enough of the cold. I'm going to go and find where that Northwest wind begins and I'm going to plug up that hole with my raggedy old cap. Be careful, Jack his mother said, you never know who you'll meet or what you'll find along the way. And off he went, looking for the place where the wind begins. Jack had traveled quite a way and was getting pretty hungry when he met an old man. Where are you going? I'm going to where the wind begins and I'm going to plug up that hole with my raggedy old cap. You have a long search ahead of you to find such a place. Surely you must be hungry. Come on into my cabin. I'll give you something to help you on your way. Into the old man's cabin they went, and the man took out an old tablecloth. He put it on the table and said, spread, tablecloth, spread. And at once there appeared a meal with all of Jack's favorite foods, corn and beans and stewed chicken and apple pie. A hungry Jack ate until he could eat no more. Then he thanked the old man and turned to leave, and the man folded the cloth and gave it to him along with a warning. Be careful of the rowdy boys who live down the road. They are up to no good. Sure enough, a short time after he left the old man's cabin, Jack met up with the rowdy boys. Where are you going? I'm going to where the wind begins, and I'm going to plug that hole with my raggedy old cap. So, what have you got there? After they pestered him for a while, Jack couldn't resist showing off his cloth to the boys. Spread, tablecloth, spread, he commanded, and the tablecloth was filled with delicious food. The rowdy boys began to plot to steal the cloth. They invited Jack to stay the night in their warm cabin. While he slept, they took his magic cloth and left him a plain old tablecloth. The next day when Jack awoke, he decided to take the cloth home to his mother. He was eager to show her what had been given him. His mother watched as he spread it out and commanded, spread tablecloth, spread. But nothing happened. That's okay, Jack, said his mother. I'm just glad you're home. And then she showed him how to make a shirt from the cloth. It wasn't long before the Northwest wind began to blow again through the walls of their cabin and Jack set out once more to find where the wind begins and plug the hole. Once again, he met the old man on the path. Jack told the old man that the cloth didn't work anymore. Did you stop and talk with those rowdy boys I warned you about? When Jack admitted that he had shown the cloth to the boys, the old man shook his head you are a good boy though, said the old man, and I'm going to give you something else to help you out. He picked up a hen from the corner by the fireplace. Hold your cap under the hen. Then the old man commanded, come, golden egg, come. In Jack's cap lay a golden egg. You take this hen home to your mama, said the man, and be sure to stay away from those rowdy boys. Jack started out with the hen under his arm and it wasn't long before once again, he met up with the rowdy boys. What's the hen for? They asked. It's for my mama, said Jack. When the boys began to tease Jack about carrying around a hen, he couldn't resist showing them how the hen laid a golden egg. And it wasn't long before the rowdy boys had tricked Jack again, keeping his hen and giving him a different one instead. Once again, Jack went home with something special for his mother. But when he commanded the hen to lay, nothing happened. That's okay, Jack, she said. 
I'm glad you're home safe and thankful to have something for dinner. And with that, she cooked the hen and they enjoyed it together. But it wasn't long before the Northwest wind blew again through the walls of their cabin. Jack set out one more time. For a third time, he met the old man on the path. Jack, where are you going? I'm going where the wind begins and I'm going to plug that hole with my raggedy old cap. I gave you a hen that laid golden eggs so you could buy wood and a hammer and fix up the holes in your cabin. What happened? And Jack told him about meeting the rowdy boys and how they had tricked him and stolen the hen. The old man said, if you will promise to go right back home and forget about looking for the beginning of the wind, I'll give you one last gift. And the old man took Jack into his cabin and took out a big knotty stick. You'll need to be careful with this and stay away from those boys. And he said to the stick, play away club, play away. And the stick flew out of his hand and began to knock down trees and chop them for firewood and stack them on the porch. It will chop and chop until you tell it, stop stick, stop. Take it home with you and be careful of those rowdy boys. Jack headed toward home again, but again, it wasn't long before he met the rowdy boys. They talked him into showing what the stick would do. When they saw it chopping and stacking wood, they were amazed and began to plot about how to steal this too. Jack agreed to spend the night, but insisted that he would sleep with the stick in his hand. One of the boys came in while Jack slept and took the stick out of his hands. Play away, club, play away, the boys said, and the stick began to move rapidly back and forth. It knocked down and chopped all the furniture in the whole house. Jack woke up and said, this stick will take down your walls and your roof and your whole house unless you give me back my hen and my tablecloth. Frightened, the boys gave Jack back the tablecloth and his hand. Stop, stick, stop, commanded Jack. Smiling, he gathered up his three magical gifts and went home. From then on, he and his mother had enough food to eat, enough money to repair their cabin, and firewood to keep them warm when the winter winds blew. Jack never again looked for the place where the northwest wind blew. In our story, Jack always returns home. The words to our hymn this morning are in Zulu and mean, be still my heart, even here I am home. It is number 1056 in our teal hymnal, but the words will be on your screen.
A good story exists on many different levels and can be enjoyed in many different ways. The story about Jack can be enjoyed as a funny story about a boy who makes mistakes until he gets things right. A story about perseverance, a story about being called to do something even when you can't quite figure out how. Different people may enjoy it, but take different things from it. When I ask people to reflect on stories, I am often surprised by what I end up hearing, and this time was no different. I asked board members, Amelia Maddox and Kate Ashby to read and reflect on this story, and they both heard things that I had not heard. I hope you enjoy their reflections as much as I did. Um, thank you to Marie for uh, sharing uh, this story with us. Um, I grew up listening to Jack Tales from storytellers like Ray Hicks and Jackie Torrance, and I was familiar with this particular tale. But hearing this story with adult ears really brought a different perspective from that of my childhood. And so I wanted to share with you some of my initial thoughts. Um, first, uh, why does the old man keep giving Jack these gifts? They seem unearned. Not that gifts need to be earned. I'm just curious about the motivation of this old man. The story also seems to take on an individualistic perspective. While Jack attempts to help the rowdy boys with his gifts, ultimately he only uses them to support himself and his family. And it feels as though there's really no sense of community building. But what really struck me most in this story, which completely surprised me, was why the rowdy boys are rowdy. What do they need? Does their attempts to steal the gifts mean they lack resources such as food and shelter? Perhaps it's my background in public health that forces me to see these problems as an upstream issue. We all know this. Bullies aren't created in a vacuum. Circumstances have put them in this position where they feel they have to take advantage of others to get what they need, and they may have learned the behavior from someone who bullied them. So in this Jack tale, while I see the intended message conveyed, I'm still left wondering how Jack could have shared his gifts with these rowdy boys. You may have heard the story about the couple who was fishing in a river one day and a person in distress came floating down the river. They rescued the person and as soon as they pulled them out of the water, another person who was drowning came floating down the river. They spent the whole day rescuing people who were drowning. They decided they needed to find out why so many were, people were falling in the water. So they walked upstream to find the source of the drowning people. What they found was an overlook where people were falling because there were no protective barriers. So they approached the leadership of the town nearby and described the issue of the drowning people. And the town worked together to build the protective barriers needed to prevent folks from continuing to fall in the water. So when this community worked together, they were able to create a safer environment for everyone. Public health. So what does this have to do with Jack and the Rowdy Boys? What was the upstream issue that caused the Rowdy Boys to need to steal Jack's gifts? What if Jack had asked the Rowdy Boys why they were stealing? I do see this as a community concern. Could Jack have been just the community the boys needed? I really felt this urge to make this tale, this Jack tale, more relevant to our lives today and the issues currently facing our community. And so I want to leave you with just a few questions. What are the gifts we have and how can we use them to support the rowdy boys in our community? Who are the rowdy boys here? Are they those who are loud, desperate, seeking validation and willing to still steal from others because their community doesn't, that doesn't provide the resources they need? What ways do you identify with the rowdy boys? Do you identify with Jack? Do you identify with the old man? Wow, so many questions.
As I've read the story of Jack and the Northwest Wind, a few themes come to mind. The first is not truly understanding what you are aiming for. Jack started his journey wanting to make his home warmer and to eliminate the cold. He thought that by going to the source of the Northwest Wind and plugging it, that he would solve his problem. All of us hearing the story, reading the story, can see very clearly early on that that is not a plausible solution for Jack's problem. We may all be jumping to quick conclusions about ways in which that he, he could have improved the condition of his home. Oh, just put up some boards, maybe some curtains, maybe add some blankets to the bed. That'll make the home warmer. What I really enjoyed about this story is that Jack went on his journey. His mother didn't stop him by saying, stop, Jack, that's ridiculous. You can't plug the Northwest wind. That's not a solution to our problem. She let him go and learn from his own mistakes. He began his journey and he encountered the old man whom he told his plan to. He told the man what he intended to do to take his cap and plug the hole at the source of the Northwest wind. And instead, again, instead of telling Jack how to solve his problem or what he should do instead, the man gives Jack a gift. First in the form of a tablecloth, which provides food, then the hen and then the stick. And he gives him advice and guidance to help him along his journey. But at no point does he tell him what to do instead of what he planned to do. It took Jack several times of encountering this process. And on the third time, he knew what to do to take those gifts home. By that point, he had realized that the solution to his problem was not plugging the hole at the source of the Northwest Wind, but rather to take home his bounty of gifts to serve him and his mother moving forward. He took these gifts from a complete stranger. The stranger wasn't involved in Jack's life before. Jack didn't plan to encounter the stranger along the way but he was given these unearned gifts. This made me really think and reflect on situations in my life where I have earned, or I have been given unearned gifts. And there have been so many. And as I've thought this week, and as I've lived through this week, I've thought a lot about the gifts that really stand out and that really change who you are. Um, I am lucky to be mom of almost three children. Um, as I have journeyed through parenthood, it is so similar to the story that Jack encountered along the way. I think um, most new parents have an idea of how that experience is going to be. You have a plan, you have an idea, you have a purpose, you see a problem and you solve it. But the reality is um, that journey completely changes you. You learn to really assess the needs of others. Up until becoming a parent, I was not responsible for another human being other than my own self. I was able to determine my needs, and now all of a sudden I have to determine the needs of another human being. I had people all around me who probably wanted to tell me the answer or tell me how to do things, and there were certainly plenty of people who did try to tell me how to do things, but I didn't listen. Um, it was the ones who silently or gently gave me a gift, gave me advice without telling me what to do or how to do it 
that helped me reach the end of my journey or to solve my problem. And along the way, I have become a more patient person. I would not say that I am a patient person, but I am a much more patient person now than before I became a mom. I've learned to understand the differences among people in a much, much deeper way. My children could not be more different from one another. Um, and it is just a joy to see their differences and to celebrate them. And I've learned to give myself a break, which is much harder than I would like for it to be. Um, but one of the gifts that I have picked up along the way is knowing that I am not perfect and do not need to be perfect and could never possibly be perfect. Being a parent has completely changed who I am. And the last thing that I really took from the story that was um, striking and goes along with that theme of parenthood is just unconditional love. Throughout Jack's journey, he always had somewhere to return. His mother was always there waiting for him. She was prepared to help him, to accept him back home, and even to accept the journey that he felt he needed to be on and that he went on. Becoming a parent gave me the opportunity to experience that unconditional love in a way that I um, couldn't have imagined before. Being a parent has shaped and changed me in so many ways. Um, I would encourage each and every one of you to think about Jack's story and what unexpected or unearned gifts you have picked up along the way. One of the ways that we live out our mission to create loving community is to contribute financially to the ministries of this congregation and to the good work of our community partners. Our offering for the time being is going to Greensboro Mutual Aid. This is the non-pledge part of our offering. We believe that ordinary people can make a difference, that most everyone has a hard time sometimes, and the lack of an appropriate federal response to this pandemic has rendered even more people even more vulnerable, especially with this current cold this winter. We know it did not have to be this way, but since it is, we will do our part to fill the gap. If you'd like to make a contribution via PayPal to the church for our offering to be split with our community partners and our congregation, you can do so at the link in our chat and indicate COVID in the memo line. You can also mail a check to the church. Our offering will now be gratefully received.